When you're working in high sulfidation epithermal systems like this one in Kazakhstan, buggy silica is the holy grail because it tells you when you're close to the feeder structures where the ore usually is, and if it gets brecciated because it's really porous, it can make a great host for ore. It forms when really acid hydrothermal fluids coming up that feeder structure come into contact with a porphyritic rock, typically an andesite. The feldspars first get altered to clay, and then sometimes to alienite, and then in the most extreme facies right next to the structure, even that gets ripped out to leave a cavity. That cavity sometimes gets lined with very fine, druzy textured quartz, and if it's broken up and later mineralized, then those cavities get infilled with sulfide. In this piece here, you can see some rectangular shapes after those feldspar fenacrists, and they're particularly nice here because the insides of the cavities are lined with manganese oxides on the weathered surface here. So if I just break a piece off here, And on the broken face here, you can see that all these holes after the feldspars are completely empty. They're just lined with some very fine druzy quartz, but there's no clay or alunite filling up the holes. So this is the real deal, genuine buggy silica. When you're a little further out from the structure, you can see things that look very similar to buggy silica on the weathered surface, where that clay or alunite gets leached out by weathering but when you break open the rock, you'll see just white oblong shapes where that alunite or clay is still present. And here, about 100 metres away from that other outcrop, away from the feeder structure, there's a rock that looks pretty similar. It's got lots of those little rectangular holes after the feldspars and a silicified matrix, so it looks like buggy silica on the weathered surface. But inside, the story's a bit different. You can see that all those feldspars have been altered to clay. On the weathered surface, that clay's been leached out by weathering to leave holes that look like buggy silica, but it isn't. This is pseudo buggy silica. There's lots more volume of this outside the real buggy silica, but it's not so good because it means you're further away from the feeder structure, it's not so brittle so it doesn't break up so easily, and it doesn't have all those nice holes to fill up with sulphide. So if you come across a beautiful outcrop of buggy silica like this one, just make sure you break it open first and check that it's the real deal. That'll help you to get a bit closer to those all-important feeder structures that are likely to have the ore in them.